for August. This month, we read Looking for Alaska by John Ooh. Green. And we're going to be taking your questions tonight and discussing this book in full. We're going to be taking your questions over on Twitter using the hashtag Looking for Booksplosion. And before we get into our feelings on this book, we wanted to announce our book Explosion book of the month next month, which is Frankly in Love by David Yoon. And our live show is going to be on October 5th at 7 p.m. Oh, we all get these up really quickly. I wasn't looking at this. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. So pick up this book next month and join us. We're super excited to read that. But tonight we're talking about Looking for Alaska by John Green. I lost my copy. That's why I'm using the back cover of. <laughs> <laughs> I have a weird copy. You have a, I have a special 10 year edition. We have lots of different editions tonight. So Christine, why don't you kick us off with your thoughts on this book? Yeah, so I didn't read this book for a very long time. And then I read it because I heard it was like catching the rye. Catcher in the rye, oh my God. <laughs> I heard it was like Catcher in the Rye and I really didn't like that book, but it really isn't at all. Um, I think it has similar themes and that's why um, it's people say that. But anyway, I really enjoyed it. And I was spoiled too, just because I, it's been in pop culture for so long before I read it. And I've just heard people talk about it for years and years. Um, so I feel like I had a very different reading experience than maybe someone who would have read it originally had. Um, but I just really enjoyed it. I love how raw it feels. And um, like you can tell it's like something that's really close to John. Um, and uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it the second time around. I think maybe a little bit more than the first time. I did the audiobook and having already known the story and like every, like having after seeing it, because I read it for the first time with my eyes and then seeing it here again with the audiobook, I just maybe like it more. Kitten, what about you? Well, I read it this for the first time um, a long time ago before BookTube. Um, this was actually one of the things that got me into YouTube because from reading this book, I found John Green's YouTube channel uh, back in like 2007, I want to say it was, it was a long time ago. Um, and I, I do think I liked the book better when I first read it. Um, just mostly because of like how my tastes and like just the YA market in general has grown mm -hmm. over the years. Um, but when I first read this book, it was one of my favorites of all time. Like it was my favorite contemporary. Like I loved it. I wanted to read more books by John Green. I think he had another one out at the time I'd finally gotten around to reading this. So like I started reading all his books and um, yeah, I, I still really enjoyed it this time around. It's just, it's not the kind of story that I personally love the most. Right. It's yeah. Not like a, it's not like a happy go lucky book that you just want to pick up and read. Right? Yeah, definitely. It's, it's a sad book. <laughs> the, first half, the first half is plenty, it's pretty happy go lucky for the right. most part. You know, it's like a fun contemporary. It's um, not like a fun, I feel like. It's fun is like a strong word for this book. <laughs> I don't know, all the pranking and stuff and the yeah, boarding right. school shenanigans. Yes. Jesse, what did you just say? The pranking. Oh, oh okay. I missed, like, I missed what she said. Well, I also did say it was edgy. Like oh yeah, yeah, it's edgy. Yeah. Um, but that's so interesting that like you found John Green's YouTube channel through reading the book because I like was the opposite. Like I found his YouTube channel first, and then I like discovered. How did you, you remember how you found his YouTube channel, Jesse? Because I'm trying to think because it was really early on too. I don't know. I feel like it was probably just like recommended to me or something. Mm -hmm. But Christine, did you have the same experience when like where like you found his channel first and then read his books, or like the other way around? So I had heard about his books, but I hadn't read them. Um, and I, I think I knew the vlog brothers and that's how I had heard about his books. Like, cause I listened to Pottercast and Muggle, I think Pottercast was where they talked about his books and they interviewed him when he did, what was that? Grayson and Grayson? Is that well, what it was? Grayson. well, Grayson, well, Grayson, they had him on the show and I knew I had like seen them pop around. I think I'd seen them pop around on like recommended and I hadn't watched and that's when I started watching their channel. Um, and I bought Will Grayson, Will Grayson, and I never read it, but I, but I did buy Paper Towns and read it. And I also then read Catherine's, Catherine's, all Catherine's. <laughs> so it's weird because it was so early. I have a hard time saying like, what came first, the chicken or the egg? <laughs> like, yeah, I like the only reason that I specifically remember 
my story is because like that's one of the big things that got me more into YouTube. It was like 2006, 2007. It was around that time. And I was really into like uh, writing blogs and stuff like that. And some of the blogs were talking about John Green's book. And it was his video, um, it's called I Am Not a Pornographer because this book had been banned from like certain schools for being porn. And so he like made a video like saying uh. that, that, that that's a ridiculous claim and stuff like that. And so like that was the first video I watched. And for a long time, I not for a long time, for, for a little while, I did not realize that Vlogbrothers was two different people. I thought John and Hank were the same. You know, I think I a did too. Videos. And I was like, he's a little bit different in this video, but I yeah. like that. <laughs> no, I, I think I did too in the beginning. You know what? I'm pretty sure I found everyone I followed afterward on YouTube through mm -hmm. Vlogbrothers because like, I know I found Charlie through their recommended. Um, and I found a lot of people through Charlie McDonald. Like Charlie is so cool. Like, um, the, the vlog brothers are like what got me into social media. I feel like the first person I followed on Twitter was John Green. My <laughs> first one was like everyone from MuggleCast. So it was, it was them and the heroes people. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was going to say, um, something about John and I completely forgot. Oh yeah. No, I think like I found Hollywood and then I started following mm -hmm. like John then the vlog brothers and then I went and looked up his books and that's how I found like everything after that because I was like solidly watching them week to week in 2010 like that it's just like so long ago now yeah. so which of his books have you guys read which John Green books have you read I've read all of his solo books I've read all of his solo books and Will Grayson Will Grayson I, I haven't read the let it snow I haven't read that either novellas. But I think that's the only thing of his I haven't read. Okay. I've read all of his solo books except for Abundance of Catherine's. I want to reread that one because I literally have no memory of it besides a tampon factory. Like, that's. I, I want to reread that one too because, like, rereading Looking for Alaska made me, I, I don't know, like, nostalgic for like all the old John Green books. Like, because I haven't read any of his, like, I've only read Turtles all the way down, like, since I've been on BookTube. Or like TPOs way back in the beginning of book two. Mm -hmm. Like it's been a long time since I read some of these books and I, I love revisiting those. So I want to read Abundance of Catherine's too. Yeah, I do too. That's the least talked about one, I think. So mm -hmm. I want to read it. Um, a lot of questions on Instagram asking us to like rank them from like our favorite. Yeah. Books. So out of the ones <laughs> you've read, rank them for us. Who wants to start us off? I, I Do you want to do a cat? It's hard. I don't know. <laughs> okay. I, I, you go first. <laughs> okay. um, I feel like after like initially reading the books, my favorite is Tiffios. Um, mm -hmm. Because I found that one really funny and moving at the same time. Um, and I also really liked like the romance happening. And then um, under that, was paper I loved Paper Towns literally up until the end. And then I was like, what was this end? <laughs> um and then after that I would put Turtles because I thought Turtles was great and very well written. I just it made me too anxious to like be like this is my favorite. <laughs> and then um and then looking did I already say looking for Alaska? No. And then looking for Alaska and Looking for Alaska, what I appreciated it for like different reasons than what I would call like my favorite reasons. You know, like yeah. the romance in it isn't really a romance. It's more about like coming into your own and like finding yourself and through like different relationships and different experiences. Um, and like, there's so much smoking, which all the time, like, stop smoking. I forgot about that. I was like reading and I was like, why are they smoking so much? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, and it was kind of right before the turn of, like, every, like, smoking's really bad. Like, you know, like, it was during this time that they were all those really, um, really influential smoking campaigns were happening at this time when they were. I also think part of it is, um, it's based in John Green's high school experience. Yeah, that's an idea. older than us, so he was in high school, like, even before any of that, like, smoking. Yeah, yeah, like. Like, they've talked about it on Dear Hank and John um, about, like, how successful that campaign was. Because mm -hmm. now, like, 
there are very few like new smokers leading into you know like the new generation in comparison to how how no, much back, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um but yeah now i'm like oh stop stop it <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you about you guys okay uh are we ranking on like enjoyment or like objective quality? I think of enjoyment. Like, like I think your personal enjoyment. Because anyone could do like objective critic. Okay. My personal enjoyment, I'm gonna say paper towns because I love that book. It was yeah. really fun. There was a mystery. Um I also I the thing is I read this in like what, two thousand eight, so I don't yeah. remember a lot of my initial feelings, but I liked the ending. I feel like I read this is one of those rare books that I read like all the way through, finished it, and then wanted to read it again. Hmm. Um, like I really love Paper Towns. You I read like the ending, huh? Did you like? You said you liked the ending. I think I, I must have liked the ending. I don't remember disliking it. And it, like this was one of the first books that I had pre-ordered. Like this was right at the beginning of me getting into YouTube and like starting a book collection. It was right when I was reading Twilight for the very first time because like those movies were coming out. Um, so I want to say I already Towns. read Twilight. It's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I want to say Paper Towns is the one that I enjoyed the most. Um, then probably Tifios, and then Turtles, and then Looking for a Lab. No, no, and then Abundance of Cap. Mm, I I think Looking for after this reread, I want to say that Looking for Alaska is probably my least favorite of his solo books. I, I did like it more than Will Grayson, Will Grayson. Um, but I need to reread Paper Towns and Abundance of Catherine's before I can be sure. Yeah. What about you, Jessith? A lot of the ones that I've read, The Fault in Our Stars, then Paper Towns, then Looking for Alaska, then Turtles. That's all I've read, I think, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Cool, cool, cool. I really wanted to enjoy Turtles more, but it just like sent me into an anxiety spiral for a week. So like that wasn't a pleasant experience, but it's an amazing book. Like I loved it. It just what affected me. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like too close to home. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Okay, so let's see here. Did you find any of the characters annoying? This question's from A Res Three. Um, for me, John's character style makes some characters annoying. Um, I like I find like a lot of characters feel like real people. Yeah, um, and like Alaska sometimes is like very blunt. Um, but like you find people like that, and that makes her real. There's right. some they're his characters are cool. people like that in the real world. Yeah, yeah. Like his quirks and stuff that he gives all his characters makes them feel very um, real. Mm -hmm. it, it's one of the themes that he likes to play around with and that I think he's really good at about like imagining people complexly. Mm -hmm. Like you know, they have layers, there's more to them than what you might see or they might have like contradicting qualities or you know, they might be moody or whatever. Um, but yeah, it is, it is real. Uh, characters that I found annoying, though, not in particular. I mean, the bullies in the book, yeah. like the weekend warriors, like I didn't like them. Um, I was also, I kept getting like frustrated at the injustice of like, you can't tattle on anyone kind of situation. I was like, oh, we're, we're in spoilers now, right? Yeah, we are in spoilers. So yeah. if you don't know the spoilers. spoilers. Um, like when they throw him in the lake all taped up. Oh my god. Yeah, I and I was like, go to the police. <laughs> like, <laughs> like they could have murdered him right then and there. I would it never was, get over that. It was so frustrating too when he like went to um the colonel and went to Alaska and is like Yeah, and they did the like and they're like, Oh, you're fine, like they do this to everybody. He's like, No, but like they didn't know the full situation. Yeah, yeah. Like when the colonel finds out, he's yeah. pissed. They're like so mad. Yeah. He's a very loyal dude. Yeah. I just can't imagine what is in these kids' minds where they think it would ever be okay to do that to someone. That's you know, in high school you shit like this. Like, it's horrible. They're horrible sometimes. No. Because, like, you don't really think about, like, you know, Miles is always learning this lesson about mortality and, like, how, you know, you yeah. feel like there it could never happen to anyone you know your age. You're too young. 
Um, and so they, I feel like that's the disconnect there. And that's exactly what he's trying to show with that. Like they think it's not a big deal because yeah. um, he, there's no yeah. way. That he'll yeah, it is. It's totally. Like that's how a yeah. lot of teenagers act. Like you yeah. kind of, I know I did. Like I didn't care as much about consequences because like those were things far off in the future. Who needs to worry about that? Yeah. Like even things just like moisturizing your face. You're like, why would I have to do that? I'm so young. It's just like, if you don't do it now, it's going to be harder when you're older. So um, listen up, kids. If you don't moisturize. Moisturize. <laughs> moisturize. Even when you're a youth. Um, yeah, Samantha just said, do you, do you find there's a difference between reading this book for the second time in your 20s versus reading it the first time? And I think Kat's the only person who had that comparison. Jesse, what, how old were you when you first read it? Uh, probably 17. Okay, well, then you probably have it too, but do you not remember? I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, not, not much. Yeah, and I can't think she talked about her. Yeah, um, I, I mean, the, the biggest difference is that when I first read it, um, every, like, I wasn't a big reader, so, like, everything about it was very new. Like, every trope, every sort of, like, you know, the manic pixie dream girl yeah. subversion, stuff like that. Like, I had none of that in, in my head. I, like, was very new to the world of, like, books. Right. Um, if they weren't Harry Potter books. Um, so I, I think that was the biggest thing, that, like, reading it this time around, I was able to uh, pinpoint a, a lot of the ways that the YA market has shifted in the last like 15 years since this book has come out and how like different authors play around with different tropes, like the manic pixie dream girl and you know, how, how characters um, like in this book, the guy characters uh, objectified the girl characters more than I feel like we see these days. I don't know. I feel like it, I mean, that's true to high schoolers too. Like, yeah. and it's sad, but like, that's just how it is. And I think he kind of learns that Alaska is like the antithesis. Like she's, she calls out a lot of it. Mm -hmm. um because and that they're learning that's a big i think that's a big thing you learn from like high school to college it starts to like shift now it's even earlier because now there's this whole movement which is great but like a lot of high schoolers like even just knowing like it's like my teenage brother when i was like in college and all his friends you know like it's just like they don't understand mm -hmm. how it affects girls to be yeah, true i think that's also part of it like when I first read this, I was still very close to being that age and mm -hmm. being in those situations. And then, like, as an adult reading this, I'm just like, this is unacceptable. <laughs> like, yeah. Because, yeah. like, yeah, now, like, we're just so much more exposed also mm -hmm. to um, how things should be and the consequences of that and everything in that way. Like, at that time, you just don't understand how you affect people. Mm -hmm. And it's really sad. <laughs> Um, somebody, oh, Jesse, you have a question? Yeah, I have one. Um, this comes from Emily on Instagram and they ask, do you think this book romanticizes smoking? Because I read it four years ago and that's all I remember. I don't think it romanticizes it. I think it like, just shows how peer pressure. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is it do you guys? Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't really see it romanticized, but it, there was a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, I could see where you would think it's being romanticized because there is so much of it. I think like from if from a reader nowadays who wasn't around then can think it's romanticizing it. But I feel like then it's just like realistic in the terms of like your pressure. Yeah, right. um, like because he, he says he's like not a smoker and he doesn't want to smoke. And then like he just ends up doing it because everyone around him is freaking doing it. Um, and I'm also thinking of things like Stranger Things, which um, you, has a lot of smoking in it, and like they said that they were gonna like cut back on smoking in the next season because yeah. of, like, um, yeah. and it makes sense because it does like people just don't see it, so people don't do it as much. And now when they see it, they want to be like them. There's this like natural instinct. Um, it could so probably even be like a trigger for people who have quit smoking too to like see it. I mean, I think that there was a little bit of romanticism, like kind of with it in. There, Alaska's whole story is like a kind of romanticism with dying almost. So like the smoking was kind of romanticized in that way a little bit. Um, or like glamorized maybe, yeah. or made to be like more mysterious and cool. Yeah, um, but like, I don't, 
Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't use the word romanticized in any yeah, way. Yeah. Um, it's just a part of it. And I think nowadays, you know, just naturally, it's not good. It wouldn't be included in fiction as much, mm -hmm. in young adult fiction. Um, and, um, yeah, and it's different, I feel like, reading it than seeing it. Like, because in A Stranger mm -hmm. Things, it's just kind of, like, always there, but we're not talking about it. Yeah. Um, and it's a visual piece. And I, I think that it probably does affect youths, youths seeing it. Um, but with a book, I feel like it's kind of different. Like it is, I don't know. There's something about seeing it rather than reading it to me, at least the visual. Well, cause when you're reading it, you have a little more power over what that visual looks like. Yeah. yeah. Um, do we have another question? I have one if you guys don't have one. I have one, but you can do yours first. Okay. Um, what part of the book are you anticipating most to be adapted into the miniseries? And what are you nervous about being adapted? And these questions are from Under X the Blue and Dan De Whisperlar. Wow, I've never tried to pronounce that out loud, but I see your username a lot. <laughs> I'm excited for the double date scene mm. um, in the book where they like go to the basketball game and like he gets hit in the head with a basketball oh, like, yeah. or whatever. I thought that scene was really funny and it'll be fun to see that one. Yeah, I'm excited for the final prank. Uh, yeah, I was going to say that that one is going to be, I forgot about that during this read oh, and I was like, oh yeah, this was fun. Yeah, with Max with three X's. <laughs> Yeah, I'm excited for that one, and also the other pranks, like them running through the forest with the firecrackers and stuff, and like getting bit by the swan. Like, I'm excited to see how that whole night of shenanigans goes down. I mean, yeah, and I'm interested to see how they handle um, the scene right before Alaska leaves. Like, how many details we'll see, and if they'll make it kind of like like the mystery it is in the book, where we kind of like get flashes of what actually happened. That's probably what they will do. Yeah. Um, because since it's a mini series, I feel like it will probably be very faithful to the book, but probably expand on stuff that we don't see. And speaking of the smoking, I wonder if that's going to be something that's kind of like cut back. I don't know. On. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. I didn't see any of it in the, the tiny little trailer. <laughs> the small teaser that we got. Which, how did you guys feel about the teaser? Since we haven't really. I'm not a fan of that teaser. <laughs> Who? Yeah. I think it was Kat maybe that said it felt like a book trailer almost. Yeah, yeah it felt like a book trailer and not a great one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, I'm still excited for the show because all the behind the scenes stuff I've seen looks really good. Yeah. Um, but that trailer, I feel like it also felt like it was a trailer for, like, um, it felt like a mini, like, web Seventh Heaven. heaven or, or, what's that show? Oh my God, Seventh Heaven. Yeah, what are those, like, old, two, like, it felt like yeah. a trailer for, like, a 2009, like, family drama on ABC. Oh, family. No drama. The thing was, it was like they were just quoting book lines. And yeah. for a TV audience, like, that's not what any, it's going to hook any new viewers. Yeah, um, that's the thing. They need to market it differently. Like a real trailer. Like a real new kids. With like relationships happening. Like just interactions happening. It was like they're walking around and I was just like, what are you doing with this? Edit this differently. Yeah. Like it wasn't a great teaser trailer for new audiences or for existing ones because all of us are just like, Wait, what's up with this? Yeah, and the line that like Alaska says is just felt very out of place. I don't even remember it. I watched the trailer once. So There's like one yeah. line and she's like, like, let's have fun. Or it's just something different than let's have fun, but it had that same sort of <laughs> feel. I think John's video with the two castmates got me more excited. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, same. It was so much yeah. more interesting. Like, that was uh, way better. Yeah. Uh, that should have just been the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> um. Let's see if there's any cues. Oh, we have some Twitter cues. Who is your favorite character in any of his books? Ooh. I think mine is Augustus Waters. That's what yeah. <laughs> Augustus Waters. I also really love, um, I don't know, I want to say X Ray. What is his name? Um, with What is the kids whose parents collect Black Santas? I really like that character. Quinn. Oh yeah, cute. Quentin, no, Quentin is the main character okay. in the book. Character. Yeah. 
Uh, it's his friend that I can't remember. I can't remember anyone's name. I want to say the kid from um. Finn? Radar? Radar! Radar. <laughs> X-ray? <laughs> Uh, I, I liked the guy in um, Turtles All the Way Down. I forget his name. David? Um, yeah, the, the the boyfriend. The kind of love yeah, interest. It might be David. Yeah, I, I remember liking him a lot. Davis. Is it Davis? Might be Davis. I it might be Davis, him. yeah. Yeah, anyways. Cool, cool. I think, like... In general, this is a big change of tone. <laughs> but like, I, 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 this is a question that I'd like to ask you guys. Though, like, the before and the after. I feel like after reading so many YA books, just immediately seeing that, I was like, someone dies. Like, mm -hmm. and and knowing, can you guys hear the alarm going off? I did hear that? Yeah. Um, it's very loud. <laughs> um, and going into it, I already knew that Alaska was going to be the person who died just because of. Wow. Very loud. Yeah. Um, just because of like discourse about it in general, but uh and the titles looking for Alaska. <laughs> but like it was felt like a dead giveaway to me, just formatting it like that. What about it you? It wasn't a dead giveaway in two thousand and eight. Exactly. That's what I was gonna say. At the time of reading this, I yeah, that's one of the the big differences like again when I first read this like everything about it was fresh like no one had ever done like yeah. a before and after and like a, a, your love interest dies and you have to like make peace with that like that was a new concept yeah. <laughs> this is a question I don't know is the show set in 2005 or is it hmm. I'm not sure I feel like it's modernized I feel like it is too Luke? that's probably why how they can cut out smoking if it's modern yeah. Um, uh, which, which character are you most like? Alaska with her books and spontaneity, Pudge with his last words, or the Colonel with memorizing? Oh, I was like, I was when I started reading this question, I was like, in all of the John Green worlds, because I was gonna pick the one from Turtles. Um, you could do that though, in all of John Green's books. Which character? One are you? from Looking for Alaska, then one from all of them. Okay, from Looking for Alaska, let's pick first. I want to say Pudge's journey feels most relatable. Really? Because uh, it's kind of like, it's the finding yourself journey that yeah. like feels like he wants to like find a great perhaps. And I've had that feeling like you want to experience the great perhaps sort of a thing. Um, Alaska, like I can't relate to her in general, like just the books thing. Yeah. It's like the only thing that I'm like, yeah. <laughs> And the colonel has this kind of like go getter, like let's prank people thing that I can't relate to that either. Yeah. Yeah, for me, I related to Pudge the most as well. Um, just uh, it was a lot of the you know being kind of quiet and like yeah. a lot of the discussion in the beginning about how like you know socially like hanging on to people and just like his awareness of like social circles and how he does, doesn't have a lot of friends and. And that kind of, you know, being like the social floater person, like between groups, like I, I related with that more. What about you, Jessica? I don't really relate to any of them that strongly. Yeah. But I guess Pudge as well. Like, yeah. I don't know. Is, I don't her, know. Name, is her name like Eliza or something in um, Turtles? It's Saza. Aza? Aza. Aza, yeah. Yeah, okay. I can pick Aza. Um, I don't know which character I relate to the most out of all of his books. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't relate to any of them, like, fully. Yeah, or, like, yeah, like, where, like, all the aspects are, like, relatable. But yeah. Aza, in terms of her anxiety. You know another character that I really love that I just thought about? Augustus's best friend. I can't remember his name though. Oh, I like that guy. Oh, I can't remember his name. I can't remember his name what either. All these names. Yeah. It's gonna bother Pat, me. Do you have one? Do I have one? What? Did you pick an overall character? Uh, overall character? Um, 
Isa. Uh, Sorry. I mean, maybe, maybe Aza, Aza. Um, yeah. I mean, also kind of Hazel. Like, obviously, I'm not dealing with what she's dealing with, um, but a lot of her personality I felt similar to. Hmm. Um, Samantha says, how do you feel John Green slash YA in general has changed between looking for Alaska and Turtles all the way down? Hmm. I think John Green's style is very similar. Um, in terms of style yeah um and in terms of theme i think it's always very personal feeling um which i like i why a has changed in so many different ways it's hard to like tackle it. Mm -hmm. but i think he's stayed consistent in like the style of things he writes they're very thoughtful and um uh inner like internal one thing that I think is interesting that I think is kind of reflected in John Green's writing and YA in general is um, how, how we got more and more female protagonists and female centered stories. Yeah. Um, like, you know, back when Looking for Alaska came, first came out, a, a lot of all the books that we were reading and studying were written by male authors and like, you know, um, Perks of Being a Wallflower, Catcher in the Rye, Looking for yeah. Alaska, these kind of books. So we're getting a lot more like YA has become a lot more um, female focused, I feel yeah. like over the last few years. I mean, not obviously not entirely female focused, but um, we've gotten a lot more female voices telling stories. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. this question. Do you have a question, Jesse? I right, just picked one for this on the screen. Uh, do you think John Green's books are in a way different from all other YA books? Uh, no, I mean, I feel like if you read a lot of contemporary, you'll find ones that are, like, more this style, but just from different points of view. I would say, like, maybe at the time his books started coming out, they were pretty different. Because there wasn't much of, like, a YA market when he... Yeah, there wasn't much of a YA voice like this. Yeah. But now... I, I just feel like his, his books are more, like... You know, they, they're as unique as his author voice is. Yeah, like, yeah. The author is, like, unique in those ways. Um, and I do think John Green does have a, a kind of unique writing voice. Like, I really oh, like his yeah. writing style. He has so many great, like, quotable lines in every book. Yeah. Um, and so, like, that's something that I really appreciate. Yeah, he definitely has a unique, like, voice. But, like, in terms of just, if you're just talking about, like, books like this. Content -wise, yeah. Yeah, content-wise, you can find more, like, lots of books like this now. Because the YA market is a thing. Back then, it was, like, that was an age group that was lacking in the books um, that were published. But, yeah, he definitely has a very unique, like, writing style and voice. And it's very John. <laughs> um. Okay, I Jesse, did you say you had another question? I have another one. It's kind of sad, but okay. <laughs> um, do you think Alaska got in the accident, or do you think she killed herself? The ongoing mystery here. I think she no. got in an accident. Really? I think it, it's the, a question that is supposed to be unanswered. Yeah, I think the whole point of the book is that we might not ever know and we have to make peace with that. And that's sort of about the point of the book, like the point of like grieving and like, you're not going to get all the answers. You just have to kind of like make peace as best as you can. Yeah. So, yeah. I think, I think that we were never going to get a solid answer. And I, I feel like I wouldn't like this book as much if we did get like a solid, like she for sure did this. Um, like I, I like the mystery of it. Yeah. That's part of, the lesson. Jesse, what were you going to say? That was a very good answer. Is what I was going to say. <laughs> I agree with Kat. <laughs> but that wasn't the question. <laughs> do you personally have a hypothesis? Yeah. Do you have a theory? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I think with everything leading up to it, like, I think she just wanted to get to her mom and she was drunk. And like when they talked about her falling asleep at the wheel, like I think like considering how high her um, blood alcohol content is, it is a, like a solid theory that she could have fell asleep at the wheel, even though she drove straight. It's it's hard, obviously, but yeah. No hypothesis over there. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing me, John Green was. 
<laughs> John Green doesn't know either. I feel like that's part of it. Like that's, um, yeah. Okay, let's see. We can take some more questions, and then we can talk about um, what our lineup is coming up. Yes. Oh, yeah, we can announce our our book for November in December. Oh yeah, Ooh. yeah. Um, but let's do a couple more questions here. Somebody says, do you agree with the criticisms about this having similar characters as Paper Towns? And That's something he gets a lot. Like, he gets a lot that, like, all his characters are the same. Like, they're not. <laughs> I, mean, I, I get where people are coming from when they say that in sort of a, a general sense, because yeah. you do tend to have, like, um, you know, the quiet, shyer guy and, like, the more outgoing girl who, like, is takes control and like shows some adventure and stuff. But that's such a broad general thing. Yeah. Like, plenty of authors, like Sarah Dessen, who writes contemporary romance, like a lot of her relationship dynamics tend to be similar. Yeah, um, I mean, like, there's way more nuance to his character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think like, like that. Like you can say the similarities in like broad strokes, but yeah. if once you actually read the books, like there's so many differences and a lot of nuance that like they're, they're different enough. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys think there's going to be any other changes other than the smoking that are included in the TV show? I wonder if it's going to be like formatted in a similar way where they like start each episode being like, this is the before. You know what I mean? And they're like, this is that. Mm. Like, what they have. I don't like, know. I don't think they need that. Yeah, it I don't might, think they need it either. Yeah, I think it gives more away now. Like, because it's YA is more mainstream and everything. Right. Um, Samantha asked, what Hogwarts, what Hogwarts house would you put the characters in? We haven't done that. Um, <laughs> ooh, let's see. Miles feels like a Hufflepuff. Yeah, I want to say that too. <laughs> And the colonel feels like a Gryffindor. I don't know. He's got that Ravenclaw memory thing. He does, but he also like goes for everything. Like that thing at the at like the basketball games that he does is oh, very Gryffindor. <laughs> <laughs> like just, I don't know, his his whole thing. He really prizes his intel intelligence, though. Like in, in Thanksgiving, he was like, "I'm gr I'm grateful for the fact that I'm the smartest person in the room." <laughs> Yeah, he yeah. Has good Ravenclaw energy. <laughs> he has Ravenclaw energy, but I feel like his Gryffindorness, like he's one of those like Gryffindors who are really smart, like because he just feels he's like so bold, like I, he's so um, willing to say things and do things, and I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if that's necessarily a a, a bold. Well, it's kind of boldness, but like it's the same way that like Luna Lovegood does, and it's like says whatever she wants and like does whatever she wants and doesn't care what people think about well, her. She's definitely quieter about it. Yeah, oh for sure. <laughs> um uh let's see. Alaska is a tough one to put. Like I was thinking maybe Ravenclaw for her. Um I see she has the Ravenclaw thing with the books, but she's also kind of Gryffindor in her attitude. Yeah. She's, she's also really strange sometimes. I kind of want to say Slytherin. Maybe. Jesse, do you have an opinion on any of these? <laughs> I'm not good at sorting people. I feel like she borders Slytherin, actually. She definitely borders Slytherin, I think. Um, so maybe Ravenclaw? Yeah. Oh. They're tough because they are, like, very complexly written. Yeah, yeah it's hard to... They, they don't slot easily into houses. Yeah. I Except for Pudge. I definitely think he's a <laughs> Yeah, but is that just because John is a puff? <laughs> no, I mean, like, well, in general, like, I feel like this is John's, like, a Johnny character, um, and and he's, he does fall. Yeah, no, I'm not saying, like, I'm not debating whether or not he's a puff. I'm saying it, like, it's it's because it's John. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, like, maybe. Um, but also just for the purposes, yeah, of how, like, he's, he reacts to everyone around him. Um, I, I don't know about, um, 
Takumi, is that that's his name? Yeah. Takumi, I think um, he could be Ravenclaw or Slytherin. Because hmm. yeah. of how he keeps that information to himself at the end. Or Gryffindor. You know, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> They're too complex. They're very complex characters. <laughs> I have a question from Instagram. Uh, this is from Ash, and they ask, what do you think Alaska's last words would have been? To be continued. <laughs> to be continued. I think those are really great last words. Yeah, that is a good one. Because they're really like interesting to think about. Yeah. yeah. I also, like, was it, I don't, I don't remember, was this something that she wrote in the book where, like, the only way out is through? She wrote that. Like, if you wrote straight and fast or something like that. Yeah, it was like straight and fast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, it, that's a hard question because, like, she obviously had other words. Right. She talked to Takumi and she called Jake, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I love the last word aspect though, because I think it's just like a weird, fascinating thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I really love that John puts things kind of like that in all of his books. Yeah, like, yeah. We have the last lines in Paper Towns, we have Paper Towns, like. Yeah, he has these, he likes this big, like, abstract kind of critical thinking stuff that he. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's just a really cool, like, topic to discuss. And yeah, he, he's really into philo philosophy, and this is like mm -hmm. the philosophical aspects of his books really are fascinating and well done. Yeah, that's the thing I love about his books the most is like the ideas and the themes. Yeah, same. Um, in terms of like the actual stories, I feel like they're always like, there's something about it that I wish went differently all the time. <laughs> but like the actual like thoughtfulness that goes into everything is really, really well done. Yeah. Um, we have a question from Killed by a Book on Instagram. Uh, they ask, do you see Alaska as a manic pixie dream girl? I don't think she is just because she had, we, she, they really harp on her flaws. Mm -hmm. What about you guys? I, I don't think, I, I think she has a lot of those qualities, but I think there's a lot more complexity to her to just, you know, write her off as like manic pixie dream girl. Yeah. Um, so, she does I mean, kind of play that role and like do some of the things that like that trope character, that archetype would traditionally do, but she also breaks that mold in ways. And a, a lot of it is also um, about Pudge Miles, like dealing with his idealized version of her. Like we see her through his eyes only and he's in love with her. So like- And but we also how, like hear him be self-aware, like other people- Yeah, 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 yeah. Jesse, what were you gonna say? I was gonna say, should we explain what Manic Pixie Dream Girl is just in case people don't know what it is watching? Oh, I don't know how to explain that. <laughs> it's, like, it's like looking at someone as an idealized um, person rather than who they actually are. So like they're perfect, the perfect girl. And you kind of project your perfect image of like a someone you would like onto a person. Yeah. So then it's like a manic pixie dream boy or manic pixie dream girl. You idealize them. And then when you actually date them, you realize that they're not that what you imagine it's also about their attitude as well because they are typically like free spirits and you know very outgoing and friendly and um let's go have an adventure kind of people like that's where you get like the manic pixie dream girl because like you know they're dream girls they're supposed to be like gorgeous and beautiful and they'll crash into your life and change it forever kind of thing yeah yeah well like the, but the attitude thing i feel like there's something that just like happens like with like first meeting somebody that you like like i feel like that's like yeah. no matter what it's part of it too yeah yeah it's like so i think that can be Plus, he wasn't like like pudge wasn't really experienced in like the dating field necessarily yeah so like that's just gonna first happen. person that you're like, yeah. in path, like you're gonna get caught up in your thoughts yeah yeah, yeah. So, i mean like it's a real thing that happens all the time and i think yeah. um they it's a it's self-aware it's not like a something that is like oh, this is just a manic pixie dream girl. It's like, no, this is like really what he's experiencing and like people are calling him out on it and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, and then he really explores that in Paper Towns really well. Oh, yes. All right, do we want to talk about Maybe. our fall book explosion book of the month lineup? Yeah. Okay, in September, like we said, we are reading Frankly in Love by David Yoon. Our live show is going to be on October 5th because this book comes out on September 9th. 10th. 10th. <laughs> so we're giving you guys some time to read it and join us. Um, but yeah, we're super excited about this book. Then in October, we're going to be reading Fountains of Silence by Rita Sepetys. I don't have this book yet, but this book comes out on October 1st. And we don't have a live show date set yet, but we will be announcing that soon enough. So keep eyes out on our socials. Yes. And then in oh. November, we're going to be reading Cursed by, who's it by, Kat? Frank Miller, or it's, it's illustrated by Frank Miller and written by Thomas Wheeler. There's gonna be pictures in the finished copy. I have an arc here. Yes, and this is going to be a Netflix show? Yeah, it's going to be yeah. an original series, I feel like, early next year. And this, this book comes out in October? Uh, yes, October. And then it's our book of the month for November, so you have some time. And then, uh, we're announcing December, right? Yeah, but I don't have that book. I don't have it either. Okay. Should, should we wait? Or should we... Let's, let's wait. Let's wait until we have the book. Yeah. Well, yeah. next month. Um, oh. Justin Smith is asking for the synopses of these books. Uh, Frankly in Love is a love story that I don't really want to know the synopsis for. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, we'll we'll be sharing these in our book hauls and TBRs and stuff in the coming months. Yeah. We don't want to like just read the blurbs to you guys, but you can look these up on Goodreads if you want to know a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and a debut standalone contemporary romance. This is a historical fiction set in 1957 Spain. And we follow four main characters in this. And um, this is like um, the Knights of the Round Table times, right? Yes, it's a twist on an Ar Ar Arthurian legend. Okay, yeah. I mean, like that's synopsis enough for me to be like, cool. <laughs> um, so that's a little tease. Yeah, like the inside said, whosoever wields the sword of power shall be the one true king. But what if the sword has chosen a queen? Wow, I think that Christine should do the audiobook for that book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm excited for all of them. Yes. So oh. we'll be announcing our December book of the month soon. But this is our lineup for now. Yeah. So we're doing a Dear Book Explosion live show on September, what day did we on? We picked September 18th, I believe. Yes, September 18th, which mm -hmm. if you don't know, we do this monthly live show where we call it a Dear Book Explosion. It's like an advice live show, so you guys can submit some like things that you want advice on and we come together and do it live. Yeah, like questions, like any sort of questions. Like if you're just if you have a question about, I'm trying to think of something weird and then failing uh, about a broken window and how you like, you know, it's really cold in your room and what should you do about it? <laughs> you know, we have a, a couple episodes on our channel. You can, yeah, you can look at yeah. what it's like. And yeah, just email any questions you have to question. What no, emails no. are like the letter R awesome at gmail.com. It's like toys are us. Emails are awesome at gmail.com. Yeah. And they could be in our next live show. And you can check out our first three that are on our channel right now. Yes. Put that email in the comments. So check that out. But anyways, thank you guys so much for joining us for our looking for Alaska live show. We had a lot of fun discussing the book. And hopefully you guys can pick up Frankly in Love and join us next month. Yeah. Um, I'm Jesse. I'm Christine. I'm Kat. We're Book Explosion. Thank you guys so much. See you guys later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>